Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at Yeoman, and specifically we're going to take a look at the uh, Yeoman generator, or I'm sorry, the Yeoman uh, angular generator. Uh, so Yeoman is uh, pretty simply, it's a, just a great way to start a new project. Uh, it's a combination of the Yeoman software, Grunt and Bauer. Uh, we've looked at Grunt and Bauer in the past, so today we're going to take a look at Yeoman. Uh, so, uh, I want to get something started over here in my, uh, console window, and then we'll jump back to the application, or, you know, the, the information about Yeoman. Uh, so the way you install it through Node Package Manager, install TACG, uh, and then Yo, and, uh, and then you can install one of the generators. Now the generators, and we're going to take a more in-depth look at those in just a moment, uh, basically, uh, so the one we're going to look at is the Angular generator, so we're going to run this, uh, install generator angular and then wherever you want to run your project or install your uh, scaffolding you do yo angular so I've already got uh, yeoman installed and I've got the generator installed and now what I'm going to do is set up a directory for our application I'm going to call it yang uh, I'm going to cd into that and then I'm going to run yo angular <clears throat> now optionally you could pass in an application name I'm just going to uh, leave it at the default, which is going to use the directory name, I believe, and we're going to end, end up with like Yang app or something like that. Uh, now, when I first run it, it's going to ask me uh, if I want to install Twitter, uh, or I mean Twitter Bootstrap and a couple other things, so we'll let that get started here. Uh, so, yes, and no to Compass, and then uh, right away you have the option of installing these optional modules. Uh, so I'm just going to install Route, which is something we're going to take a look at. Uh, and then I'm going to let that run for a little bit. Now we are going to run into some errors on Windows with a very specific module called Grunt Contrib Image Min. Uh, and I'm just going to ignore that for the purposes of this video. There's a way around it, <clears throat> but it's not, it's not going to affect what we're doing. So, all right, so let's take a look at these generators. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here, you know, uh, it's loading up a list of generators. And uh, what these generators do uh, is they basically build out the scaffolding for all sorts of different types of applications. Uh, so the one we're working with right now is Angular, but here's one for Angular PhoneGap, uh, here's one for Ember, Backbone, WordPress, uh, Jekyll, Firefox, I mean they've just got tons of them. As of right now it says there's 315, uh, and I think yesterday there were only 300 or 305 or something. Uh, so, so it's a growing uh, list uh, provided by users. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this Angular one, which is what we're installing right now. And let me just take a look over here. So that's still going. So here's the Angular generator project. Uh, and it walks you through how to install it, which we just did. And then uh, once you've installed the generator, they have what's called a sub-generator. All generators can have these sub-generators. And then these do really cool things. Uh, lots of automation here. Uh, so the one that we're going to look at first is this route one, and what that does is when you run yo angular route, and then you tell it what you want your route to be, it produces a controller, and it produces a view, um, which is really cool. And the one thing they're not mentioning here, and I'm sure it's somewhere in the documentation, is it also produces a test uh, for that controller, which is very cool. Uh, you will notice that in the uh, code that it's producing, it's not using the array syntax for dependency injection. There is a way to force that. Uh, so you can, when you can create your controller here called user, you can pass in double tack min safe to force it to use the uh, Angular, or I'm sorry, not Angular, the array syntax. Uh, but the great thing is you don't really need to. Uh, there's uh, in the grunt tasks, there's one called build. Uh, which basically takes all of your uncompressed code and runs it through a few processes and one of them is called ng-min which automatically adds the array syntax to uh, your what they're calling unannotated code but basically code that doesn't have the array syntax it adds it in there for you so that you've got proper dependency injection all right let's take a look okay this is all done we did get the error uh, it's it, it is involving this jpeg tran which is used by the uh, uh, grunt contrib image min, but again, we're not going to worry about that right now. Let's just load this up in our text editor, <clears throat> and we've got a lot going on here. So, here's our application in this app directory. Uh, we've got an index file here that's loading up. Uh, let me blow this up. So, it's loading up uh, 
our jQuery and Angular. All these bootstrap JavaScript files, our Angular route module, uh, and then our app. And one thing to mention is when you're working with these tools in Windows, almost uh, every issue that you run into is going to be based on either an environmental path variable uh, or uh, an environment path variable uh, or uh, a file name or a directory structure, forward slashes and you know how the files are named and things of that nature. So uh, I've noticed that for some reason I get two mains in my initializing of the Yo Angular app. I'm just going to delete that one. It's not bothering anything. Everything's fine. Uh, now uh, we've also got here, so it generated out uh, a controller for our main. It generated out a view for that. Um, we've got some style going on here, bootstrap and main.css. Nothing, nothing great, nothing uh, complicated, all very simple stuff. Uh, now, we've also got a ton of node modules. All those are going to get used. And then uh, down here, probably the most important file in this entire project is going to be the grunt file. Uh, and if I scroll down to the bottom of this, we can see that uh, we've got a few different tasks here. So the first one is server, uh, the next one is test, and then the next one is build. And then down here, is there, there's a default that basically runs JS hint, then test, then build. Uh, so let's take a look at this server one really quick. So that's going to be grunt server. And uh, you know what, just in case, I'm going to run the force flag because we are going to get this issue with the grunt contrib image min. So I'm going to keep using that uh, throughout this video. Uh, so you can see right away it saw that, you know, it doesn't have the image min, but that's okay. We're going to work right past that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this is our application. I'm going to try to keep as much on the screen as possible. Um, so this is basically our index loading up our uh, main route. So this is the main HTML. Got some navigation up here, but it doesn't go anywhere right now. So let's start with that. So I want to create a route that goes to this about page. Uh, so let me load up another tab here while that's running and CD into Yang. Whoops. CD into Yang. And uh, so now all I need to do is say yo angular route and then whatever I want to call it. So about in this case. And before I run that, let me see if I can get a couple things here on the screen. So uh, in our controllers right now, we just have main. In our views, we've just got main HTML. And when I run this, it is going to uh, generate those for us. So it's going to create the controller. It's going to create the view. Uh, let's take a look at that really quick. So we've got our uh, main, and now we've got an about controller. Uh, now we've got an about view next to our main view. Uh, and if we look at our index file, we can see that about.js has been added to our page. So that's awesome. Uh, now one other thing it's doing down here in the test directory is it created a test for our about controller. So that's awesome. And uh, we will definitely take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, so let's get this, let's see if we can get this uh, about page working here. So let's see, let's uh, move this over a little bit. See if I can keep a few things on the screen. So let's load up our main or about, about and main. And I can get rid of this sidebar for a second. So this is our, our main.html. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this navigation go to the about page. And then I'm going to copy that into our about view. And up here, I'll just change the active link to the about link. And I think we're good to go. So I'm going to save that. And as soon as I save it, you can see over here on the right, it refreshes the page. Now, uh, so we have home and now we've got about. Uh, whoops, nope, that didn't go to about, did it? Let's see. Let's go back to the main. And yeah, you know what? That should work. Let's refresh one more time. About. Oh, okay. It's working out. Okay. So uh, this is the home page. This is the about page. And just so you can see something's actually happening there. About save that and you can see we've got about on the about page home on the home page or you know this on the home page uh, so there you go we just created a route and it took us absolutely no time at all uh, <clears throat> it generated the view it generated the controller and it generated the test so that's awesome uh, so of course if we wanted to we could create uh, let's say angular directive we'll call it the directive uh, that'll create a directive for us. We can jump over here to the code 
and we'll see a new directory show up for the directive or for all directives uh, and again it'll write a test for us which is really really cool so here's the directive it just created uh, it's called the directive so if we wanted to use that let's uh, drop that onto our about page uh, where'd that go about and I'm just going to drop that in right here so uh, the syntax for that is going to be dash directive I believe and then we can close that and then uh, I'm just going to get rid of this stuff so that we can actually see it so I'll save that and this is the directive directive which is exactly what it's supposed to be outputting this is the directive directive and we can also see that down in our tests it's expecting you know the element.txt to be this is the directive directive okay so before we move on to looking at the test let's look at one other element which is going to be build so right now we've got everything in this app we've got our tests and uh, what we're going to do is uh, you know what? I'm going to stop our live server for a moment I don't know if that's going to cause a problem or not and then over here I'm going to run grunt build and again I'm going to pass in force because of the image min issue uh, but what that's going to do is really cool so um, if you remember you know we were looking at our index file and while that's while that's going actually we can take a look at it really quick so uh, in our app if we're looking at our index file we got these two CSS files we've got all this JavaScript going on uh, and of course each of our JavaScript files is a separate file so let's see this is finishing up right now and once that's done we're gonna have a new directory here here it is called dist dist so it's letting us know that everything's done there and if we look inside this distribution version now we'll go to the index file uh, we can see we've got a single CSS file and we've got now we still have a couple JavaScript files but nothing like what we did have uh, I don't know if I still have that open here here's our old one okay all every friggin bootstrap plugin available jQuery angular uh, angular route app main about the directive and if you look at our new one now we've got you know five calls so we've got a plugin some modules and a scripts we've got our jQuery and our angular uh, if we go look at those um, so here's our modules uh, I won't go through the trouble of going to find the exact spot where it's happening but uh, I can tell you that these are all properly dependency injected now using the array syntax so uh, so that's awesome it just it just compiled everything for us it tested everything everything's wonderful or I don't know if it did a test in the build uh, we could probably figure that out from the grunt file uh, or actually I'm pretty sure it did not so in the build uh, let's go to that task really quick so here's build and uh, no so it doesn't do the testing so let's take a look at the testing really quick uh, so testing nice and easy grunt test again I'm gonna use force and what's gonna happen is it's gonna use karma to run through the test that it already generated and it's gonna return the output of that for us so let's run a test on everything here <clears throat> now we haven't changed anything so I should probably show you that really quick once this is done running it's of course it's gonna be successful uh, but when we change one of those uh, JavaScript files, and you can see it's loading up Chrome here, it's going to take that away in just a second once it's done, it'll give us the results. But when we change one of those directives, uh, it's going to tell us like, hey, you know, it, something's wrong here. So here it says executed three of three success. Awesome. It, it executed those tests and everything. It's wonderful. Uh, so let's go and take a quick look at those tests. So let's try this about one. So in the about one, by default, it had this list of awesome things. And right here, what it's testing for is for the length of that to be three. So let's go into our app and change that. So about, and let's just add another thing. So right now, if we don't change our test, we're going to get an error. And I think it's probably important that you see what that looks like. So let's run our test again. And of course, we're expecting it to come back uh, with an error on that test. So let's uh, stare at the screen for a minute here and here comes our test and uh, you know so it says one of them failed and it tells us right up here uh, that the about controller should attach a list of the awesome things expected four to be three the error was expected four to be three so now if we go back to our test and we say let's make it four because we know we changed it to four items or length to be four and we run our test one more time 
this uh, now this will pass. So you just need to be aware that if you go changing some of the default directives and controls, which you're going to do, you're going to change them because you're not going to use them out of the box. Uh, then you need to you know go and look at the tests that it generated, and uh, it's actually a great way to get started with testing because you can use the tests that it generated to to really learn how to write tests for these things. Uh, so there we go, uh, three of three with success. Uh, hey, that's Yeoman, uh, the Angular generator which again, like I said in the beginning, it's just a great way to start a new project. If you're gonna start an Angular project, I honestly can't think of a better way to start one. It just, it gives you everything you need. It gives you all these commands to start building out your routes and services and controllers and directives and writes the tests for you automatically. It gives you, uh, you know, the build uh, 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 task and grunt is fantastic. It just compiles everything for you. Uh, so again, that's Yeoman, the Angular generator. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good one.